This demonstration is going to illustrate uh, how to install zipper tubing's PRT uh, heat shrinkable tubing. Uh, the zippertubing.com website has a full write-up installation instruction on PRT tubing and how to work with it, digital pictures, um, and this uh, video demonstration just supplements this document. You definitely want to use this document uh, when you're training and learning how to use PRT. Um, it is similar to working with standard heat shrink tubing, uh, but there are a few differences that are important to note. Um, PRT tubing is really nothing more than standard 23053 slant 5 polyolefin heat shrink tubing. It's been split longitudinally and a pressure sensitive adhesive, transfer adhesive has been applied along one edge. Uh, the first thing you're going to do uh, when, when making a PRT installation is to measure the uh, cable diameter that you have. Now I've already done that. This cable when compressed is right around 5 eighths of an inch. It's important that you uh, measure the diameter because what you want to do is go to the sizing chart and find the cable diameter, in this case 5 eighths to 3 quarters is a number 6 size and you will need to have that number to order material and pull it off uh, from your inventory. This is a sample of number 6 and uh, I simply cut it off the spool with a pair of scissors. PRT is very easy to work with um, you would like to you know, get a decent cut, but unlike standard heat shrink tubing, if you have a small snag, uh, the material it's not critical. Uh, zipper tubing PRT does not have a tendency to split like standard heat shrink tubing. In fact, you can cut uh, notches and windows out of the tubing and not, without fear of it uh, splitting open on you while you're heat shrinking it. Um, the other thing you're going to need is a hot air heat gun. Tip this one has the uh, has adjustable uh, temperature control on the back. You don't absolutely have to have that. <clears throat> you would like to have a heat gun that can generate around 150, 40 to 50 degrees C. The tubing shrink begins shrinking at around 90 degrees C, and will ultimately <clears throat> shrink uh, um, quite well in the 120 to 130 degrees C range. Uh, you also will need a narrow nozzle type attachment for your heat gun, not a tubing reflector that is very common with heat shrink tubing because one of the main differences of PRT is that you want to apply the heat selectively in the beginning to the adhesive overlap area. This sets the adhesive and the bond strength of the adhesive joint will approximately double upon cooling. Uh, so having uh, a control device like a nozzle like this to concentrate the heat at the adhesive overlap uh, is very critical. Uh, once you've selected your tubing size and cut the piece to fit, you simply wrap the tubing around the cable. Um, the Probably the most important thing you can do is take your time PRT tubing will save you so much time relative to disassembling a cable with connectors on it to get the piece of tubing where you want it that there's really no need to rush. You uh, wrap the tubing around the uh, cable so that the uh, paper release liner covering the adhesive is facing you. Peel the adhesive release liner off the adhesive back about an inch or so and overlap the, um, the non-adhesive edge and you'd like to get just all of the adhesive uh, covered. You don't want to cover much more than that. Once you get it started, uh, just continue along. If you get any minor wrinkles in the tubing while you're applying it, don't worry. Um, they will disappear upon shrinking. But generally, if you do due diligence, you ought to be able to get it together without uh, too many wrinkles. And just continue to peel the adhesive back. And once you get a, dis a little bit of distance going, it, it somewhat self-aligns. And when you're done, you come back 
and rub the adhesive joint with your thumb. Work it down nice to make sure it's it's stuck all the way around. Now at this point you can move the the tubing around wherever you want it if you need to locate it, uh, install it in one location then slide it into your location that's fine too. After you have that done, uh, I'm going to turn your heat gun on and like I said it's not totally critical as far as the uh, the temperature but uh, you don't want to go too extreme. Now once you have the uh, narrow nozzle, you want to turn the tubing uh, facing you so that you're, ex you're going to pour the heat limited to the adhesive or the uh, tubing overlap. And I like to start back a little ways from the end because as you apply heat, the overlap is going to wrinkle up. It's going to look like it's going to pull apart. Um, the truth of the matter is, this is normal. And uh, just continue to apply the heat to the overlap area only, nowhere else. And this, this one isn't wrinkling up too bad, but Now the main reason that you put, apply the heat locally over the overlap is that the tubing is double thick there. The entire adhesive overlap area shrinks. So it takes a lot of heat to get through the outer layer and to shrink the inner layer. In fact, many customers will get to this point and let the part cool off completely. What you'd like to do is shrink the rest of the tubing after this uh, overlap area is cooled slightly. Um, if you've been very diligent uh, in sizing it correctly, you can go ahead and start applying heat elsewhere because PRT is designed to not have a lot of stress left in it and it won't tend to pull the adhesive joint apart. If you've undersized it um, and you apply heat all the way around the product while the adhesive overlap area is hot, it may still, it may tend to pull itself apart. So it's real important that you measure your bundle size and have the correct size tubing. Now this is cooled down. It, it's still hot, but it isn't, it isn't red hot by any means. I'm going to continue to apply heat and continue to shrink the remainder of the uh, tubing circumference. Now there's a spot here, it looks like it's raised up, you can touch that with your finger, in fact, you got to be careful while it's hot, you don't burn yourself because it's sticky, but if it tends to lift off, just tap it back down a little bit, and uh, continue to apply heat to make sure you don't have any fish eyes or cold spots uh, in the tubing and it looks like it's recovered fully. And when I look at it, I want to come back and lightly tap the edge to make sure it's down and it looks pretty good. Now if you wanted to bend the cable or something, now's a good time to put a little bend in it if necessary. You can also shrink it on a cable going around a corner. Um, it just depends on your application. Uh, in this case, the material is is still pretty hot when you're. But if you notice that there's a little, maybe an eighth inch of adhesive exposed here, 